Hey everyone, welcome to Plants and Politics. I have a bit of an update about Jeffrey Epstein's estate and how many alleged victims have come forward seeking restitution. There's also been a request made to keep the estate's monthly financial report sealed and out of the public eye, which I'll explain in just a minute. But as you may or may not know, the notorious pedophile and child sex trafficker, Jeffrey Epstein, updated his will while he was in prison uh, just two days before he was found dead in his cell. In his will, he named two of his longtime associates as co-executors of his estate, men named Richard Kahn and Darren Indyke. And these two men set up a confidential compensation fund from which payments would be made to Epstein's alleged sexual assault victims. Well, monthly reports are required to be filed with the court in relation to this compensation fund, and they have been. They've been filing them every month. However, these reports don't provide any claimant information, and the website for the compensation fund even notes that, quote, no individual claimant information will be published or disclosed in a way that compromises claimant confidentiality. What the report does provide, though, is top-line figures and basic stats, such as the fact that a total of 47 people so far have submitted claims. Of the 47 that have submitted, eight determinations have been made and the eight claimants have been notified. Now, it doesn't specify whether the determinations were positive or negative, um, and the report does note that no funds have been distributed to any of the claimants as of the most recent filing, which was last week. So we don't know if those determinations were, yes, you're entitled to compensation or no, you're not. The report also mentioned that the final deadline to submit a claim against Epstein's estate is March 25th of 2021. So not too far off. I mean, that seems like a long way off, but we're already in September. So we're talking about six months from now, six, seven months from now. But Khan and Indyke are the ones who are seeking to keep these reports hidden from the public. And they cited confidentiality for the alleged victims as the reason for their request. But clearly, based on the very general and nonspecific information contained in the reports, there doesn't appear to be a legitimate reason for these reports to be sealed. So to me, it just appears that these men are just trying to hide the number of girls that may have been victimized by Epstein and his depraved sociopathic accomplices. And, you know, there's strength in numbers. Women may feel embarrassed or insecure or reticent to, to step forward when there's only one or two others speaking out. But when you have dozens or potentially even hundreds coming forward, that changes the dynamic. It, it makes it impossible also for mainstream media to ignore and deny, although I'm sure they're going to give it their best shot. Because so far, they've done a really great job at ignoring all of this. So we'll see. No news as to whether or not the court is going to approve that request, but I'll let you guys know. And I will keep you posted on anything else with this case. So as always, like, share, subscribe. I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Thanks for listening to Plants and Politics. The only way we can take our country and power back is to spread the truth and build an army. So remember to like, follow, subscribe, and share on Facebook, YouTube, and wherever you listen to your podcasts. Thanks again.